off. The issue that had so many Americans energized was the opposition to Obamacare. In 2021, the issue is education. The one good thing about the awful, terrible pandemic is that parents had the time to burrow into their children's schooling, and many were horrified about what they saw. It turns out that a new so-called anti-racism and gender equity focus wasn't so popular after all. Poison. This will tear this country apart if it becomes a part of our fabric. A critical race theory, which is pretty much going to be teaching kids how to hate each other, how to dislike each other. Just because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. Well, apparently school boards across America thought they could radically revamp course offerings from American history to literature and no one would notice. But they were badly mistaken. Now parents and citizens alike see how activists promoting a deeply anti-American agenda have wormed their way into almost every facet of the educational experience. Well, parents should be upset about this, and their concerns are not political, they're practical. Parents are saying, Hey, my kid's not reading and writing at grade level, but somehow they have time to hold assemblies on diversity, equity, inclusion, and police brutality. Or they're saying, in school, they put more focus on George Floyd than George Washington. Parents should be demanding answers because schools have become a minefield for Democrats, of course. The Biden administration just reflexively took the side of school boards against the parents. Now, after the National School Board Association pleaded for relief, claiming its members were under siege, the Department of Justice snapped into action. I've never seen anything like it. In their own memo, they warned of a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, and promised to take action if necessary. It sent a chilling message to moms and dads, pretty much anyone interested from coast to coast, beware joining a movement that we essentially link to domestic terror. When a firestorm then erupted, the National School Board Association pulled back. They saw they had created a bit of a ruckus. So they apologized for the descriptions of parents as violent, harassing menaces. But when pressed today on why the DOJ hasn't also rescinded its follow-on letter, Attorney General Merrick Garland just dug in. Presumably, you wrote the memo because of the letter. The letter is disavowed now. So you're going to keep your memo going anyway, right? Is that what you're telling me? Senator, I have the letter from NSBA that you're referring to. It apologizes for language in the letter, but it con continues its concern about the safety of school officials and school staff. Okay. If the point wasn't to intimidate parents, it's all justifiable, why did the DOJ invoke a national security component? You're going to create a task force that includes the National Security Division. What does the National Security Division have to do with parents at school boards? This is not, again, about parents at school boards. This is about threats of violence. Again, this begs the question, why would this suddenly be a new federal matter? Any threats or violence are already prosecutable under state law, as well as federal law in some cases. So why the need for a DOJ task force? How is it the Department of Justice was able to move so rapidly on a single letter from a special interest group that has now repudiated that letter, said it regrets sending the letter, and apologized to its members for sending the letter? The answer is, when we get reports of violence and threats of violence, we need to act very swiftly. You didn't investigate before you issued your, your memorandum, the incidences cited in the letter, did you? Look, I took the, uh, a statement by the National Association when they said that they were facing violence and threats of violence, and when I saw in the news media reports... Of yeah, but you didn't investigate the incidents in the letter, did you? No, there were, uh, this is the first step. This is an assessment step. It comes before investigations. Come on, we all know what happened. Presumably the White House let it be known that they needed this whole school controversy to quiet down and for parents to pipe down. Dangling the possibility of FBI action against parents just attending school board meetings would be one way to get that done, or so they thought. 
This was all coordinated and it blew up spectacularly. Are you aware of conversations between your Department of Justice officials and White House officials and the members of the school board association all cooperating together? As I said, I am sure there were conversations with the White House. I have no idea whether there were conversations with the school board association. There's nothing wrong with there being such conversations. There's nothing that I know, knew about this organization to suggest that it is in any way partisan. Yeah, all those conservatives on school boards and associations for school boards. Of course it's not partisan. None of this is partisan. It's all just a coincidence that school boards are overwhelmingly liberal. And what about this underlying evidence? Is there really a growing national threat posed against these school boards? Committee chair, teachers union apologist Dick Durbin was reaching for anything. Those who argue that school board meetings across America are not more dangerous and more violent than in the past are ignoring reality. I went on and just typed in this morning school board violence on one of the search engines. Page after page is coming up. 24 years in the Senate, ladies and gentlemen, and he's just entering terms into search engines and then proclaiming it as so. Another argument for term limits. This is all too much. And if Glenn Youngkin wins the Virginia gubernatorial race, it will be because he focused so much on the travesty unfolding on the education issue in Loudoun County. Rapes in school bathrooms and classrooms, a cover-up, and the harassment of parents who dared to ask questions, even the family of the victim. Meanwhile, Democrat candidate Terry McAuliffe is flailing. I am sick of them talking about these issues of critical race theory. We do not teach critical race theory here in Virginia. It has never been taught. It is a racist dog whistle. This is all generated by Glenn Youngkin. This is what MS-13, the Republicans used on Governor Northam four years ago when he was running. They try to find a divisive tactic. That's pathetic. McAuliffe is too bought off by the teachers unions to see that this goes way beyond Glenn Youngkin. This is about parents discovering, many cases for the first time, the truth about a growing socialist monopoly in education. The Angle warned you about this over a year ago. Black Lives Matter zealots now have outsized influence in school districts like Fairfax County, and their goal is to turn your kids into hardcore activists by remaking education from top to bottom. I watch hours of these school board meetings, and it's horrifying what we're seeing. It's a big business. Critical race theory, anti-racism, pedagogy, cultural Marxism, implicit bias training, decolonizing syllabi. And this extremism is like a cult. And now that many of us are on to them, progressive school boards and districts across America are freaking out. Do they change the radical course, or do they just try to discourage parental involvement on all these hot-button issues? The Mankato, Minnesota School Board chose the latter. This is a business meeting of the school board. It is not a meeting that belongs to the public. Each speaker is asked to state his or her name and address for the record. Failure to do so will result in an individual not being allowed to speak. Open forum per participants are prohibited from calling out or addressing any individual school board or school district staff member. Do you understand what she said? This is not a public matter. So if a parent's concern is not on her agenda, I guess the controversy or concern didn't happen. It doesn't matter. It's like magic. It just goes away. How convenient. Sounds like there's another school board that needs to be replaced. Taxpaying parents fund the public schools and rightly deserve answers and accountability. Any politician, I mean any politician, who stands in the way of this legitimate exercise of parental rights and any bureaucrat who uses procedural gimmicks to insulate himself from criticism should be tossed from office as soon as possible. This spells political defeat for McAuliffe and countless Democrats who believe they're above reproach as long as they're woke. And that's the